So moving on, let's start getting into doing some um, actual coding. Um, if there are any questions at any point, by the way, feel free to either uh, pop them into the chat and, and we can go from there. Uh, I'm just going to share a link in the chat. Hopefully that comes through. My apologies if I've got that mistaken. Um, and if you want to follow along with this, you are absolutely welcome to. But this is Microsoft's Arcade is what they call it. And it's a free website. You uh, you might sign up for a Microsoft account, but it's just an email and a, and a password. There's nothing more to it. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, and this is a great way to get started with coding. And this is what we're coming at this from now. You are introductory to coding because I am not a coder. You know, I don't build softwares, but I have a basic level of understanding. And for me, this is one of the great ways because half the battle sometimes with code and what we're talking about is we're talking about a series of letters and numbers that you are telling the computer to perform an action and it can be quite confusing when you look at it because it's a language in itself and it's like any language until you learn it um to a mastery level it's, it can kind of be very confusing uh, and what I like about this particular website to help get people started with coding is it breaks it down very very simply but also gives you uh, an end product in a very short space of time so you can see the fruits of your labors um so if you're following along you're welcome to equally if you're just watching this is what we're going to do we're going to come down here and you see there's a series of tutorials and effectively these are all just different kinds of games you may have grown up with you know if you're like me and one of the original nintendo children you know those will look very familiar in terms of the graphics and such and uh, all you have to do is select um the kind of game you want there's lots to choose from we're going to have a go at building chase the pizza and it will then ask you here what kind of tutorial do you want? And this is where the differentiation comes. If you are completely new to coding and it's just not something you've done before, but you're interested in the concept of it, we have block coding, and that's what we're going to follow today. If you are going on to that next level, going a bit more advanced, you can choose to do the tutorial where it will teach you specific coding languages, JavaScript and Python being the main ones. Um, for this tutorial, we're going to select block coding. It will take a second to load. But essentially what block coding is, is it's a way of coding actions without the use of knowing what all the sort of language behind it is. Um, so it puts a front on the actual coding language. So you'll see here at the top, we have our instructions. It tells you exactly where to click and what to do. And you see this is the these are the blocks that they talk about. And what we're doing is we're basically just going to build a jigsaw. Think of it in that sense. We're going to find our right pieces, put them together, and we'll see our results here on the uh, on the gamepad screen. So open the scene toolbar, set the background color, and we need to just click and drag onto the start. So we're saying on the start of the game, we're gonna set the background color. Um, you can move through at your own pace, of course, with these kind of tutorials, and you can see like little hints and things that it gives you. We can choose to set our background color. So, you know, it's a Man United based company. Let's go for red. Uh, and then it'll say, right, open up the sprites toolbar. We, and what we want is this set my sprite. And your sprite is the term given to like your character where, when you're sort of playing a game. What that will do is that's going to create our character. We now need to draw our character. You don't have to be super artistic at all. But you can open it up and it gives you a little option to sort of draw what your character is going to look like. So we're just going to do a nice, quick, yellow, smiley face. This could be anything. You can take your time. You can create an actual full-bodied uh, person. You can create a monster. Really good if you're trying to get young children into in, into the idea of building codes and what they are. So we're just going to do uh, an old-school 90s smiley face. Click done, and you'll see it appears there. Uh, moving on, now we're just going to set our controls. Now these are where we're going to tell it how we actually want to control the sprite. So we're going to drag this option here. And it's telling us here we can move the sprite with the arrow buttons. So this will be the arrows on your keyboard that you're currently on on your computer and your laptop, whatever it may be. Okay. And you can press up and down, and you'll see here on the left hand side, it's recognizing that from our code and it's moving the character around as we uh, want it to be. Uh, the next stage then is we need to set what is it going to chase. So we're doing chase the pizza. So we need a second sprite. Drop that code block down. So we're building in blocks once again. This is going to be our pizza sprite. So what we're going to do is click on my sprite two here. And we're going to select rename the variable. One of the key things with um, 
coding is you get lots of what are called variables. And a variable is essentially something that can be uh, an option that can be different. So, you know, if you had something that said pick numbers one to 10 and you get 10 points if you pick the right number, um, the variable will with the change in the score, for instance. So in this case, we've got lots of two things that are called my sprites. Now, if you're just dealing with one sprite, you know what it's referring to. But if you're dealing with two, it can be confusing. So it's good to relabel your variables so you know exactly what it is that you're telling the computer to do. So in this case, we're going to set this to be called pizza because that's what it's going to be. Okay. So... We're then going to select the idea of it's not another player because this is our player, our smiley face is what we're going to control. We want this to be the food that appears randomly that we have to go and chase. Okay. Then we're going to set what our pizza looks like. So we could design one, but if not, we can go up here to the gallery. And this is where you can choose any of these sort of ready-made sprites for you to use at your leisure in your games that you create. We're gonna go for the nice uh, pizza. You see how it changes on the uh, block coding screen there. That's a couple of steps now. So here's what we're gonna do. We're now gonna tell it what to do when it catches the pizza. So we're gonna click the uh, Sprite box as it tells us, drop that onto our game pad. It doesn't matter where you put these, by the way. It can be on top or underneath. As long as it's on there, it knows what to do. It does a lot of the hard work for you, okay? Oops, sorry. So what we're now going to do is just tell it what to do. So currently it's saying when our player character overlaps the food, but we need to make sure it knows that that is a food. So when it overlaps the food, we now need to tell it what to do. So we need to open up the info tab, as it says at the top change the score so now it says when our little smiley face eats a piece of pizza we get one point fairly straightforward for a game so let's set the position for the pizza to random locations which is a really good thing because that's what you want it to do okay so we're going to open up the sprites we're going to do set sprite position this is how it's going to tell us our pizza to to appear So we're going to click on this and make sure it knows we're doing the pizza to appear. And then we're going to go down to the math box. And we're going to tell it to just pick random coordinates. So this is how it's going to make our pizza appear in different places throughout the game. Okay, so now what we need to do We just need to set the uh, size of the screen. So you can see here it's telling us it's 160 pixels wide. That's this portion here, 120 pi pixels high. Okay, so in the first value, which is this one here, a bit random, we're going to change the minimum value, so the maximum value for 160, so it knows it can go at any point from there to there. And on this value, we're going to change our maximum to 120. This will basically mean that the pizza can appear at any point in this screen and it won't just appear in like one little small square. Okay, and now we need to set the countdown each time. So obviously we're going to have a time limit on this or else, you know, where's the challenge? So we're going to open up the info box again. We're going to do start countdown. I'm going to drop that in to our, to our box there. Uh, and we can set this to be as long as we want. So 10 seconds seems pretty good, though. We might just leave it at that. But that could be five, that could be 20, depending on who your audience is. And you'll notice the countdown timer appears on your game screen. And now we've done. So now what we can do is try the game simulator and have a go. So if I was to move around, you'll see I catch the pizza. The pizza appears in random places throughout the screen. It counts down from 10 seconds every time. So if I was uh, maybe a bit younger or maybe having a go, you see how I've got four seconds. And my score is increasing up here in the top right hand corner every time. So it's a very, very simple game. But there you can see within the space of 10 minutes, what you've actually done is coded a computer game, which is quite a good achievement. And block coding is great for learning that. And all these tutorials that you have across um, 
Microsoft Arcade. Each one scales up. So every time you'll get something with a bit more of a complicated lap, and it'll talk you through it each stage. And there's constantly hints and tips and little visuals to show you what it maybe should look like if you think it maybe it doesn't look like the right thing. Um, and it's really useful thing. So you can move on from this one and you can create a shooting game where you're flying a spaceship through space and shooting the aliens. And you can create um, a basketball game where you can throw the basketball into the hoop and try and do it as many times as you can in a set time. Very simple games, but very enjoyable games and ones that you can program yourself. And once you feel confident with block coding and you understand the idea of having to do structures, what you can then do within Microsoft Arcade, like I said, is go into the background and go into the languages that it uses. And it shows you. Um, and we're just going to leave this tutorial here because once you've completed your tutorial, again, you can see. So we built this using block coding, but it actually uses JavaScript language behind it. And if you wanted to see what all of this actually looked like, we have our blocks. We can click on our JavaScript. And that is essentially exactly the same as the block code in there, but it's telling us what it looks like from the language point of view. So once you get to a level where you start learning languages, it's a great way for you to kind of go from one to another and discover exactly what it is that the language is saying behind the blocks. Um, another useful little website I want to share with you very quickly is this one here. And this is if you are looking maybe more to get into the idea of digital design and coding in that aspect. So rather than computer games and software, you want to look at coding from a design point of view. Um, and it's a free website. It's called W3 Schools. It's been around for many, many years. And essentially, this works in the same vein. It's a independent, so you can go at absolutely your own pace way to learn different coding languages. So the most commonly used coding language across the web is HTML. And that's what near enough every single website is built in. And what this website will do is it will take you through in a step-by-step -step process how to learn what HTML is and what all these references actually mean and what it shows you here. So if we use this as an example, it has lots of these try it yourself buttons throughout the tutorials that you can work through at your own pace, but it opens up a HTML running program for you. So you, what you can do is you can see here, we have our code and we have what the code actually produces. So you can play around with this as much as you want. You can you know, retype things, you can change the colors. Um, and every time you do something, you can run it and it shows you the changes every time. So it's a great way to learn because one of the trickiest things to do with code and that I always find is you think you've written your code, it's perfect. It only takes one tiny little mistake and it for it not to run properly. So using something like this is a great way for you to test your code because you can copy and paste into here directly from any other coding uh, piece of software you're using or notepad if you're writing it using a notepad and you can run it and it will show you exactly what that code produces. And you can see straight away, have I got it right? Have I got it wrong? Or actually, even if it does work, but you realize visually it doesn't quite look as you want it to, you know where you can go away and make those changes. So um, I hope that is useful. Um, and I happily uh, paused there and I'll just stop sharing my screen.